All right, so this is section 6.4 in your textbook or those pages um, that it says, um, and this is about special forms of factoring, okay? So still on our factoring kick, these are our last three types of strategies that we can use um, to factor, okay? So the three special forms are the difference of two squares, perfect square trinomials, and the sum and difference of cubes, okay? So we're gonna start with squares first. And the way that we're going to identify these um, is we're gonna look for two terms and a negative sign in the middle, okay? Both numbers have to be perfect squares, okay? Um, it's important that you know those, they're right here in the blue. Um, for a variable to be a perfect square, it must have an even exponent, okay? An even exponent, very important. Um, and then you're gonna divide that exponent by two to get its square root, right? So that's how we get those exponents outside the house is we divide by the root that we're taking and we're taking the square root, okay? So these are the squares that I expect you to know, right? One through 12. And so what these look like is like this example, x squared minus 16, two terms, okay? And I like to use the term pretty numbers, okay? If you've listened to the other lectures in the class, I've probably said pretty numbers before, right? But it's the numbers that we can take the square root of and get a number back, okay? So I can take the square root of x squared and get x. And I can take the square root of 16 and get four, okay? So when you have these, you have your two sets of parentheses, take the square root of the first one, and that goes right there. Square root of 16 is four. Those go in the other ones. One gets a plus, one gets a minus, and you're done. Okay, take the square root, one gets a plus, one gets a minus. Okay, um, yeah, let's go here. This one, okay, right off the bat, you're probably thinking, oh, well, the square root of nine is three, the square root of 25 is five, so I'm gonna do um, the square, the square thing, right? But it's the difference of two squares. This is the sum of two squares and the sum of two squares does not factor. So it would be prime, okay? The sum of two squares does not factor. Okay, so you would write prime. All right, but look at this example. So we have 64, that's a perfect square, 49, perfect square. Um, we can take the root of both of those numbers and get a number back. Your exponents are even, so you're okay. You can take the square root of those. So you're gonna say four divided by two and then 10 divided by two. So we have our parentheses, the square root of 64 is eight. The square root of X to the fourth. So we're gonna say four divided by two, that gives us X squared. And then the square root of 49 is seven. And then we'll say 10 divided by two, that gives us five. So y to the fifth. Then one gets a plus, one gets a minus, and we're done. Okay. Look at this one. Okay, right off the bat, neither numbers are pretty, right? We cannot take the root of either of them and get anything that's gonna help us, okay? But what if we did the greatest common factor first? I could take out a two from both terms. I can take out an X and a Y, right? And I would be left with 
x squared minus nine, right? That's what would be left over, okay? Well, this part is the difference of two squares. So just like in the previous video that you should have watched, we did some easy trinomials, but we had to do the greatest common factor first, and then we had an easy trinomial in the parentheses. Here, we did greatest common factor first, and then we looked inside the parentheses, and it is the difference of two squares, okay? So once again, your greatest common factor just comes along for the ride. Now we're gonna do the difference of two squares with the pink highlight, okay? So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of nine is three. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. Okay, and that's it. That is the difference of two squares. Okay, there's also something called factoring perfect square trinomials. Um, and how we look for those is we're gonna look for three terms. The first and last number must be perfect squares and have positive signs, okay? So we'll have positive signs on each end and they're both pretty. And the middle number must be twice the product of the square roots of the end numbers, okay? So that was very mathy. The middle number has to be the product of the square root of the end numbers. So you're gonna take the square root of the end numbers and you're gonna multiply them together and then you're gonna multiply that by two. And if you get the middle number, then you can use the perfect square trinomial, okay? It's write the square root above the ends and multiply them and double. See if it matches the middle. So this is what I mean, okay? Your, this guy and this guy are both pretty, right? So we have the square root of this is x, the square root of one is one, okay? So I'm gonna multiply these together. So one x, and then I'm gonna multiply by two. I'm gonna double it, right? Multiply by two, and I get two x which is good, right? Because we have two X in the middle. What that means is that you just have X plus one, X plus one. So the same exact thing, or you can write it like this. Okay, all of those will be able to be written like that. You're gonna have the same, the same thing written in both sets of parentheses, okay? If it's a perfect square trinomial, okay? So let's keep going, let's work a few more. So x squared minus 10x plus 25, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 25 is five. Okay, multiply those together and then multiply it times two and get 10x. We're good, that's what the middle sign says. Okay, so you have x, x, five, and five, okay? And your rules for um, what your signs look like are the same as our other trinomials. So they're the same sign and they're both negative, minus, minus, or you could do x minus five squared. Okay. Look at this one. All right, so look at your first um, number, 9x squared. So that gives me 9, nope. The square root of that gives me 3x, right? Square root of 64 is 8, and then square root of y squared is y. Okay, multiply those together and get 24xy, and then multiply it times 2 and get 48 x, y, which is what we need. That's the middle, right? So we have 3x, 8y, 3x, 8y. And both are the same and they're both positive. Like that. 
Okay, let's do one more like this. Square root, square root. Multiply together and get 8x times 2, get 16x. So we're good. So we can say 8x minus 1, 8x minus 1. All right, I knew it was minus because they're the same and they're both negative. So that is perfect square trinomials, okay? All right, last factoring strategy is the sum or difference of two cubes, okay? So um, we're gonna look for two terms and both to be perfect cubes, okay? So pretty numbers, but pretty cube numbers like in the blue, okay? Variables must have an exponent divisible by three this time, right? Because we're taking the cubed root, so we want them divisible by three. And then you're going to draw a binomial and a trinomial. And then you'll fill in the cube roots in the binomial. So you'll take the cubed root of the first number and the second number, and that's what goes in your first set of parentheses. And then you'll fill in the, the trinomial by filling out um, the the saying that goes square multiply square so you're going to square the first you're going to multiply them together and then you're going to square the last and then you're going to use cop for the signs copy opposite positive okay so this part right here square multiply square and copy opposite positive very very important okay for these problems. So for instance, if we have something like this, two perfect cubes, right? And we're gonna draw binomial and then my second one's gonna be a little longer because that's where the trinomial goes. So the first set of parentheses, I'm gonna take the cubed root of both terms. Cubed root of x cubed is x. Cubed root of 64 is four, okay? Now, for these three blanks where your numbers go, you're gonna square the first, so that's x squared, multiply together, x times four is four x, square the last, four squared is 16, okay? For your signs, you're gonna do copy, opposite, positive. Copy is whatever this one is, you're gonna copy it into the first one. Then you're gonna do the opposite of whatever you just did. And the last one will always be positive. Okay, so take the root, take the cubed root, and then square the first, multiply together, square the last, copy, opposite, positive. Okay, every time those will work like that. Okay, so we'll do some more. Okay, so we're gonna take the cubed root of 27x cubed and that's gonna be three x, right? The cubed root of 27 is three. The cubed root of x cubed is x. Cubed root of one is just one. Then we're gonna square the first. So we're gonna say three X squared. So that is gonna look like this actually, three X squared. So we need to square three and X. So that's nine X squared. And then we're gonna to multiply together. So three X times one is three X and then square the last one squared is one. Our signs go um, copy, opposite, positive. Okay. All right, the next one, this one is still a cubed. 
even though we have x to the sixth, it just has to be divisible by three, okay? Just has to be divisible by three because we're gonna say six divided by three when we take the root, right? So the cube root of 125 is five. The cube root of x to the sixth is just x squared because you do six divided by three. Square root of eight, I meant cube root of eight is two. Square the first, again, we're gonna do five x squared, whoop, squared, squared, okay? So that means that we do five squared, and then you have x squared, squared. So we multiply our exponents there. That's the power rule. Okay, so you have 25 x to the fourth. Multiply together, five x squared times two is 10 x squared. And then square the last two squared is four. And then fill in your signs. Copy, opposite, positive. Okay. Let's do one more. This one just looks a little odd, but it works the same way. Okay, we're gonna take the square root. I meant, I need to stop saying that. The cubed root, sorry, it's a habit. All right, so that's x, y, and three. Cubed root of x cubed, y cubed is x and y. Cubed root of 27 is three. Okay, so square the first. So x, y squared. So we would take x squared, y squared. Multiply together would be three x, y. Square the last would be nine. Your signs go copy, opposite, positive. Okay, just like that. So that was um, three different types of strategies, mostly the difference of squares and the sum and difference of cubes are two numbers. And then we had our perfect square trinomials as well.